If you watched my last video about this Afri P310, then you know it is a bit of a beast, whether you're using it off grid or whether you're using it to load shift appliances in your house. It's just absolutely faultless. But there was one persistent criticism in the comments. It was not enough of a beast and perhaps we needed to upgrade it a little bit. And Afri have responded, sent me this battery expansion module to upgrade the beastliness of the original P310. If you're new to the channel, we do this sort of stuff all the time. I'm here in my solar shed and uh, we explore these sorts of solar products and how that can ultimately save you money and bring you independence. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future content. So if you missed the last video, a quick recap. This little thing here can run anything on a 13 amp plug. No problem at all. 3.6 kilowatts of inverter power, 3.84 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And this module effectively just doubles that to 7.68 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So you can double the amount of time that you can power your appliances. So let's see what this thing can do. I don't have a specific plan for this video. Let's just take it as it goes. Let's do some experimentation. And you'll probably get some of my waffling along the way. We're gonna need this big fat, chunky parallel link cable. I showed you in the last video, of course, that this P310 unit, it has two expansion ports. We're just gonna be using one today. So of course, there is the possibility there that you could triple this capacity. We're just doubling it today. Come with me to the solar shed. Let's perform some testing. Let me show you what I've got configured here. So previously we tested a single unit We've got it hooked up to four panels. That's two in parallel and then two sets of parallel into series. We're going here into an XT90 connector. Let's just pop that in the other end. Around here, which you can now see, hopefully you can see anyway. We've got this cable, which is a balancing cable between the two units. And it has DC pins within there to transfer the energy directly with minimal losses. Heavy duty gauge cable. On the front of this unit, we've got the XT60 input, which has maximum voltage of 50 volts. And the MPPT goes up to 200 watts, which it's currently drawing. I've got this plugged into one of these 500 watt panels. So the MPPT is just capping it at its limit. And just with that single panel, it says we're gonna be 15 hours to get it from 28% up to 100%. Around this side that you're gonna to struggle to see because of the sunshine, we're at 74%, it says 85 minutes, and currently input 800 watts with four panels connected. Let's connect up this parallel cable, this link cable. Just heard something click. Now it's showing that the input here is now up to 700 watts. And right, so, so 690 watts input, 700 watts. And as we can see here, the input 785 watts from the solar panels and it's transferring 715 watts of that over to the additional battery. So here's the indicator that it's got a second battery connected. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see any of that, but in this case, it's S2. If you plug it into the other port, then it shows as S1. We had questions previously because that is capped at 2000 watts of solar input. Can we get an additional 200 watts of solar input through this XD60 input whilst we're connected to the other battery. I plug that back in. And now it's saying 744 watts input and 543 watts output. So the answer is yes, even though the manual is not clear on it, I'm still getting the full 2000 watts of solar input 
on the main unit and I'm getting an additional 200 watts of input on the slave battery unit as well at the same time. The manual does not make that clear. So if you combine the two of these, you can have 2,200 watts of solar panel input. Once we get these fully charged, then we've got the next job to do. What else would you like to see me test with these big boys? A few hours have passed. The sun's basically gone away. We're getting 100 watts of solar directly into this unit. And so this one says 88 and it's feeding out 59. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is disconnect the solar from this main unit and then we're gonna see what happens, how it behaves. There you go, XT90 disconnected. And we can see it has this little trickle of output. Now, I believe that it is basically trying to balance the two battery modules between the two units. And so you constantly have this output here, 29, 28 watts output. And this one is showing the same 28, 27 watts input on this battery over here. So no losses in that cable, it's DC to DC connector. Let me show you around the app a little bit. If we tap on the unit itself, this the wireless connection from the app connects onto the main unit. Okay, and then there's no wireless connection to the slave battery unit. It brings the data so you can see 59% on the additional battery module and that is communicated through the connector that connects the two units. Now you can see the total output says 24 watts but that's 24 watts that is actually being output from the main unit into the slave unit. And what it doesn't display here is it doesn't display the solar input that we are getting on the second unit. There we go. Now you can see I've plugged the solar back in so it's given showing us the total input up there on the top left hand corner of 85 watts. This very dreary overcast cloud. At 4% I think it's time for us to charge. Low power, please charging. I always love the Chinese to English translations. Let's see how much juice we can get out of these two batteries then. Okay, they're both showing 99% each battery, so let's get this fired up. The granny charger is thinking about it, and the solid green light means it's charging. So we should see it ramp up now. So before it was balancing, you were seeing like 300 watts being transferred from the master to the slave. Now you can see it is reversed. So the slave is sending 1.1 kilowatts and then the master is putting out about two kilowatts out through the granny charger out to the MG. So it's showing us, uh, it's approximating at, at this discharge rate, we go about three hours on each battery. So it's coming up to 12 o'clock now. I will come back and check in on this at about two o'clock, I guess. Just a quick check in, we're, we're down to 81% and it's been at this sustained over two kilowatts. The fans haven't kicked in once. Uh, I've left the door open to the garage. I've been walking past expecting the fans to kick in because it's drawing a load. Um, the thermal management in these must be very good. And previously when I did the testing on the main master unit, I found the inverter surprisingly efficient and pretty manly, pretty tough. Um, even running stuff, kettle, toaster, everything simultaneously, it was very good. But this is the, this is a good test of a sustained load a lot more than I could do previously because I got double the battery capacity. I can leave it drawing a sustained two kilowatts for a couple of hours and we'll see how it does with thermal management and you know if it's fine for a continuous load because a lot of these power stations that I've tested in the past very very good with peak loads um, just for a short time but uh, when you start putting them under a continuous load then that's when you start to run into issues with thermal management and that stuff anyway enough waffling from me another check-in when it's been another hour or so okay it's quarter to three we have dumped the entire battery into the car down to one percent over here sorry for the reflections one percent over here it is still uh, pushing just over half the power actually from the slave battery 
you can see we're still pulling 2.2 kilowatts over here. It says we've got one minute remaining, one minute remaining. The fans have turned on. I very much doubt that the microphone of this camera will pick up the fans. It's a very, very gentle uh, fan. And there's no, the fans haven't turned on on the slave unit, just on the master unit here. And I can feel it's drawing in the air from the left hand side and it's exhausting them exhausting it out of the right hand side probably not a good idea actually having them this way round because it's blowing the hot air straight into this one but this one doesn't seem to be suffering the fan hasn't turned on on this one once i don't even know if this has a fan built into it but it clearly uses the same case with the same vents or the same uh, looking vents it's now been saying one minute for four or five minutes so clearly there's quite a bit of reserve when you get down to the last one percent that went for a solid 10 11 minutes down on one percent and it was just pulling that 2.2 kilowatts constant anyway i've now plugged in the mains charging cable and i've set the charge rate to the minimum which is 400 watts you can see it's pulling that 400 watts and then it's passing 150 over here to the slave unit okay so if i up that let's say let's go for 1600 watts and we should see it start ramping up both the input and the output as it starts to distribute that power so it's uh, good to see that the dial here for our charge rate is both accurate in what it's drawing but it seems to oh here we go There we go. See, it sits perfectly at the selected amount, which is really good. That's not the case for all of these power stations. 1600 watts on the nose, and then you can see that it's just distributing some out to the secondary slave unit. So, very pleased with that. It works exactly as you would expect. So that's it. It's still a clear recommendation from me. If you need a beastly portable power station to run, an off-grid cabin, summer house, shed, whatever, this can do everything. Um, it's actually not that bad to move around because of the wheels and the handles and it can sit up on its end as well as um, on its feet. Um, today we've just used one of the expansion stockets of course if you really need it it's got the second one there as well i'm really impressed with the efficiency of this unit yes on idle it does have a bit of that kind of uh, standby loss standby power consumption but the actual efficiency if you're running this covering a base load 200 watts something like that it's a surprisingly efficient unit um, very pleased with it, very impressed with it, and especially when you consider the price compared to its competitors, it's an absolute bargain. As always, if Avery give me some discount codes for you, I will make sure the links are down in the description, whether it's buying through Amazon or their own website, whatever, you'll see all the information down there. Thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in a future video. Goodbye.